Sirach, Septuagint, Brenton Translation. Whereas many great things have been delivered to us by the law and the prophets and by others that have followed their steps, for which things Israel ought to be commended for learning and wisdom, and whereof not only the readers must necessarily become skillful themselves, but also they that desire to learn be able to profit them which are without, both by speaking and writing. My grandfather Jesus, when he had much given himself to the reading of the law and the prophets and other books of our fathers, and had gotten therein good judgment, was drawn on also himself to write something pertaining to learning and wisdom, to the intent that those which are desirous to learn and are addicted to these things might profit much more in living according to the law. Therefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention and to pardon us and to pardon us wherein we may seem to come short of some words which we have labored to interpret for the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them and not only these things but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. For in eight and the thirtieth year coming into Egypt, when Irgetes was king, and continuing there some time, I found a book of no small learning. Therefore I thought it most necessary for me to bestow some diligence and travail to interpret it, using great watchfulness and skill in that space to bring the book to an end and to set forth for them also which in a strange country are willing to learn, being prepared before in manners to live after the law. Chapter 1 All wisdom comes from the Lord and is with him forever. Who can number the sand of the sea, and the drops of rain, and the days of eternity? Who can find out the height of heaven, and the breadth of the earth, and the deep, and wisdom? Wisdom has been created before all things, and the understanding of prudence from everlasting. And the word of God most high is the fountain of wisdom and her ways are everlasting commandments. To whom has the root of wisdom been revealed? Or who has known her wise counsels? To whom has the knowledge of wisdom been made manifest? And who has understood her great experience? There is one wise and greatly to be feared, the Lord sitting upon his throne. He created her and saw her and numbered her and poured her out upon all his works. She is with all flesh according to his gift, and he has given her to them that love him. The fear of the Lord is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. The fear of the Lord makes a merry heart and gives joy and gladness and long life. Whoso fears the Lord, it shall go with him well at the last and he shall find favor in the day of his death. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful in the womb. She has built an everlasting foundation with men, and she shall continue with their seed. To fear the Lord is the fullness of wisdom, and fills men with her fruits. She fills all their house with things desirable, and garners her with increase. The fear of the Lord is a crown of wisdom, making peace and perfect health to flourish, both which are the gifts of God. And it enlarges their rejoicing that love him. 
Wisdom rains down skill and knowledge of understanding, standing, and exalts them to honor that hold her fast. The root of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, and the branches there are, are of long life. The fear of the Lord drives away sins, and where it is present, it turns away wrath. A furious man cannot be justified for the sway of his fury shall be his destruction. A patient man will tear for a time and afterward joy shall spring up to him. He will hide his words for a time and the lips of many shall declare his wisdom. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom, but godliness is an abomination to a sinner. If you desire wisdom, keep the commandments and the Lord shall give her to you. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction, and faith and meekness are his delight. Distrust not the fear of the Lord when you are poor, and come not to him with a double heart. Be not a hypocrite in the sight of men, and take good heed what you speak. Exalt not yourself, lest you fall, and bring dishonor upon your soul. And so God discovers your secrets and cast you down in the midst of the congregation. Because you came not in truth to the fear of the Lord, but your heart is full of deceit. My son, if you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. Set your heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave to him and depart not away, that you may be increased at your last end. Whatever is brought upon you, take cheerfully and be patient when you are changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him, and he will help you. Order your way aright, and trust in him. You that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest you fall. You that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. You that fear the Lord, hope for good, and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old, and see. Did ever any trust in the Lord, and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? <clears throat> or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering and very pitiful, and forgives sins and saves in time of affliction. Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands, and the sinner that goes two ways, Woe to him that is faint-hearted, for he believes not, and therefore shall not be defended. Woe to you that have lost patience, and what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word, and they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well, pleasing to him, and they that love him shall be filled with his law. <clears throat> they that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight, saying, We will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that you may be safe. For the Lord has given the father honor over the children has confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Whoso honors his father makes an atonement for his sins. And he that honors his mother is one that lays up treasure. Whoso honors his father shall have joy of his own children. And when he makes his prayer, he shall be heard. He that honors his father shall have a long life and he that is obedient to the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother. 
He that fears the Lord will honor his father and will do service to his parents as to his masters. Honor your father and mother, both in word and deed, that a blessing may come upon you from them. <clears throat> For the blessing of the father establishes the houses of children, but the curse of the mother roots out foundations. Glory not in the dishonor of your father, for your father's dishonor is no glory to you. For the glory of a man is from his father, from the honor of his father. And a mother in dishonor is a reproach to the children. My son, help your father in his age and grieve him not as long as he lives. And if his understanding fail, have patience with him and despise him not when you are in your full strength. For the relieving of your father shall not be forgotten. And instead of sins, it shall be added to build you up. In the day of your affliction, it shall be remembered. Your sins shall also melt away as the ice in the fair warm weather. He that forsakes his father is a blasphemer. <clears throat> and he that angers his mother is cursed of God. My son, go on with your business in meekness. So shall you be beloved of him that is approved. The greater you are, the more humble yourself. And you shall find favor before the Lord. Many are in high place and of renown, but mysteries are revealed to the meek. For the power of the Lord is great, and he is honored of the lowly. Seek not out things that are too hard for you, neither search the things that are above your strength. But what is commanded you, think thereupon with reverence. For it is not needful for you to see with your eyes the things that are in secret. Be not curious in unnecessary matters, for more things are showed to you than men understand. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion and an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment. Without eyes you shall lack sight. Profess not the knowledge thereof that you have not. A stubborn heart shall fare evil at the last, and he that loves danger shall perish therein. An obstinate heart shall be laden with sorrows, and the wicked man shall heap sin upon sin. In the punishment of the proud, there is no remedy, for the plant of wickedness has taken root in him. The heart of the prudent will understand a parable, and an attentive ear is the desire of a wise man. Water will quench a flaming fire, and alms makes an atonement for sins. And he that requites good turns is mindful of that which may come hereafter, and when he falls, he shall find a stay. My son, defraud not the poor of his living, and make not the needy eyes to wait long. Make not a hungry soul sorrowful, neither provoke a man in his distress. Add not more trouble to a heart that is vexed, and defer not to give to him that is in need. Reject not the supplication of the afflicted, neither turn away your face from a poor man. Turn not away your eye from the needy, and give him none occasion to curse you. For if he curse you in the bitterness of his soul, his prayer shall be heard of him that made him. Get yourself the love of the congregation, and bow your head to a great man. Let it not grieve you to bow down your ear to the poor, and give him a friendly answer with meekness. Deliver him that suffers wrong, from the hand of the oppressor. And be not faint-hearted when you sit in judgment. Be as a father to the fatherless, and instead of a husband to their mother, so shall you be as the son of the Most High. And he shall love you more than your mother does. Wisdom exalts her children and lays hold of them that seek her. He that loves her loves life. 
and they that seek her shall be filled with joy. He that holds her fast shall inherit glory, and wherever she enters the Lord will bless. They that serve her shall minister to the Holy One, and them that love her the Lord does love. Whoso gives ear to her shall judge the nations, and he that attends to her shall dwell securely. If a man commit himself to her, he shall inherit her, and his generation shall hold her in possession. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways, and bring fear and dread upon him, and torment him with her discipline, until she may trust his soul, and try him by her laws. Then will she return the straight way to him, and comfort him, and show him her secrets. But if he go wrong, she will forsake him, and give him over to his own ruin. Observe the opportunity, and beware of evil, and be not ashamed when it concerns your soul. For there is a shame that brings sin, and there is a shame which is glory and grace. Accept no person against your soul, and let not the reverence of any man cause you to fall. And refrain not to speak when there is occasion to do good. And hide not your... wisdom in her beauty. For by speech wisdom shall be known, and learning by word of the tongue. And no wise speak against the truth, but be abashed of the error of your ignorance. Be not ashamed to confess your sins, and force not the course of the river. Make not yourself an underling to a foolish man, neither accept the person of the mighty. Strive for the truth to death, and the Lord shall fight for you. Be not hasty in your tongue, and in your deeds slack and remiss. Be not as a lion in your house, nor frantic among your servants. Let not your hand be stretched out to receive, and shut when you should repay. Set your heart upon your goods, and say not, I have enough for my life. Follow not your own mind in your strength, to walk in the ways of your heart. And say not, Who shall control me for my works? For the war Lord will surely revenge your pride. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm has happened to me? For the Lord is long-suffering, and he will in no wise let you go. Concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin to sin, and say not, his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins, for mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation rests upon sinners. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in your security you shall be destroyed, and perish in the day of vengeance. <laughs> Set not your heart upon goods unjustly gotten, for they shall not profit you in the day of calamity. Winnow not with every wind, and go not into every way, for so does the sinner, that he has a double tongue, be steadfast in your understanding, and let your word be the same. Be swift to hear, and let your life be sincere, and with patience give answer. If you have understanding, answer your neighbor. If not, lay your hand upon your mouth. Honor and shame is in talk, and the tongue of a man is his fall. Be not called a whisperer, and lie not in wait with your tongue, for a foul shame is upon the thief, and the evil condemnation abound the double tongue. Be not ignorant of anything in great matter or small. Instead of a friend, 
become not an enemy. For thereby you shall inherit an ill name, shame, and reproach. Even so shall a sinner that has a double tongue. Extol not yourself in the counsel of your own heart, that your soul be not torn in pieces as a bull straying alone. You shall eat up your leaves and lose your fruit and leave yourself as a dry tree. A wicked soul shall destroy him that has it and shall make him to be laughed to scorn of his enemies. Sweet language will multiply friends and a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. Be in peace with many, nevertheless have but one counselor of a thousand. If you would get a friend, prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. For some man is a friend for his own occasion, and will not abide in the day of your trouble. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover your reproach. Again, some friend is a companion at the table, and will not continue in the day of your affliction. But in your prosperity, he will be as yourself, and will be bold over your servants. If you be brought low, he will be against you, and will hide himself from your face. Separate yourself from your enemies, and take heed of your friends. A faithful friend is a strong defense, and he that has found such a one has found a treasure. Nothing does countervail a faithful friend, and his excellency is invaluable. A faithful friend is the medicine of life, and they that fear the Lord shall find him. Whoso fears the Lord shall direct his friendship aright, for as he is, so shall his neighbor also be. My son, gather instruction from your youth up, so shall you find wisdom till your old age. Come to her as one that plows and sows, and wait for her good fruits. For you shall not toil much in laboring about her, but you shall eat of her fruits right soon. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. She will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial, and he will cast her from him before it be long. For wisdom is according to her name, and she is not manifest to many. Give ear, my son, receive my advice, and refuse not my counsel. And put your feet into her fetters, and your neck into her chain, and bow down your shoulder, and bear her, and be not grieved with her bonds. Come to her with your whole heart, and keep her ways with all your power. Search and seek, and she shall be made known to you. And when you have got hold of her, let her not go. For at the last you shall find her rest, and that shall be turned to your joy. Then shall her fetters be a strong defense for you, and her chains a robe of glory. For there is a golden ornament upon her, and her brands are purple lace. And you shall put her on as a robe of honor, and shall put her about you as a crown of joy. My son, if you will, you shall be taught. And if you will apply your mind, you shall be prudent. If you love to hear, you shall receive understanding. And if you bow your ear, you shall be wise. Stand in the multitude of the elders, and cleave to him that is wise. Be willing to hear every godly discourse, and let not the parables of understanding escape you. And if you see a man of understanding, get you betimes to him, and let your foot wear the steps of his door. Let your mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord, and meditate continually in his commandments, and he shall establish your heart, and give you wisdom for your own desire. Do no evil, so shall no harm come to you. 
depart from the unjust, and iniquity shall turn away from you. My son, sow not upon the furrows of unrighteousness, and you shall not reap them sevenfold. Seek not the Lord. Preeminence. Seek not of the Lord preeminence, neither of the king the seat of honor. Justify not yourself before the Lord, and boast not of your wisdom before the king. Seek not to be judge, being not able to take away iniquity, lest at any time you fear the person of the mighty, a stumbling block in the way of your uprightness. Offend not against the multitude of a city, and then you shall not cast yourself down among the people. Bind not one sin upon another, for in one you shall not be unpunished. Say not, God will look upon the multitude of my oblations, and when I offer the Most High God, He will accept it. Be not faint-hearted when you make your prayer, and neglect not to give alms. Laugh no man to scorn in the bitterness of his soul, for there is one which humbles and exalts. Devise not a lie against your brother, neither do the like to your friend. Use not to make any manner of lie, for the custom thereof is not good. Use not many words in the multitude of elders, and make not much babbling when you pray. Hate not laborious work, neither husbandry, which the Most High has ordained. Number not yourself among the multitude of sinners, but remember that wrath will not wait long. Humble yourself greatly, for the vengeance of the ungodly is fire and worms. Change not a friend for any good, by no means, neither a faithful brother for the gold of Ophir. Fear. Forgo not a wise and good woman, for her grace is above gold. Whereas your servant works truly, and treat him not evil, nor the hireling that gives himself wholly to you. Let your soul love a good servant, and defraud him not of liberty. Have you cattle? Have an eye to them, and if they be for your profit, keep them with you. Have you children? Instruct them, and bow down their neck from their youth. Have you daughters? Have care of their body, and show not yourself cheerful towards them. Marry your daughter, and so shall you have performed a weighty matter, but give her to a man of understanding. Have you a wife after your mind? Forsake her not. But give not yourself over to a light woman. Honor your father with your whole heart, and forget not the sorrows of your mother. Remember that you were begotten of them, and how can you recompense them the things that they have done for you? Fear the Lord with all your soul, and reverence his priests. Love him that made you with all your strength, and forsake not his ministers. Fear the Lord and honor the priest, and give him his portion as it is commanded you, the first fruits, and the trespass offering, and the gift of the shoulders, and the sacrifice of sanctification, and the first fruits of the holy things, and stretch your hand to the poor, that your blessing may be perfected. A gift has grace in the sight of every man living. And for the dead, detain it not. Fail not to be with them that weep, and mourn with them that mourn. Be not slow to visit the sick, for that shall make you to be beloved. Whatsoever you take in hand, remember the end, and you shall never do amiss. <laughs>